In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique for opening a pediatric supracondylar humerus fracture. The case is a 7-year-old that presented with a displaced type 3 supracondylar humerus fracture. You can see the distal fragment is off posterior laterally with a large intermedial spike. She also had a median nerve palsy and was clinically pulseless, although we were able to Doppler a signal. She was taken emergently to the operating room. Here we can see that large intermedial ecchymosis, or the brachialis sign. Attempted close reduction was performed, and this was unsuccessful. There was a soft, uh, irreducible endpoint with a gap medially. Concerned that this could represent neurovascular structures, decision was made for an open reduction. Anterior antecubital incision is made. And a sponge. You can see the fracture hematoma that comes all the way up to and into the subcutaneous tissue. Releasing the dermis uh, releases that fracture hematoma. In the subcutaneous layers, there are a few veins. In this case, they have all been obliterated from the injury. Couple sends. You have a Mets, please. Once we get through the subcutaneous fat, we then look for the deeper structures. I'll start laterally to find the biceps tendon as it's uh, rarely involved in the injury and is easy to identify, so here it is. The structures from lateral to medial are tendon, artery, and nerve. Artery tends to be a bit deeper here in the middle and it's harder to find, so I'll jump medial and look a little superficial. Here I am looking for the nerve, and there it is. So you can see it's uh, covered in uh, fracture hematoma, and there's the humerus behind it. So I'll use a blue vessel loop in order to uh, tag that nerve. You can see immediately adjacent to the nerve is the brachial artery and we'll tag that as well. Medium hemoclip. Next, we identify the brachial artery. It's actually the vascular bundle, as there's the artery and two vena comitants with it. Okay, hemoclip applier. Hold there. Okay, so. Okay, so that's going to be your biceps tendon there. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be all the certus. I think it's important to release Lacertus as this can be a constriction point for both the brachial artery and the median nerve. Okay, roll the elbow towards me a little bit. Okay, hold there. In this case, the tissues are blood stained from the injury, so it takes some time to go through and carefully dissect and ensure that the tissue being released is in fact Lacertus and that you're not getting into the vascular bundle or the nerve. Okay, so the key to open reducing these is getting all this stuff out of the way here. So we'll come down on this stuff a little bit there. Army Navy. Okay, now hold that there. Okay, do we have some suction, please? Okay, you got that there. Look at that stuff. Look at that stuff. Mm -hmm. Over the spike. Where's the spike? Here you can see some connective tissue going from the bundle down into the injury site. It'll need to be lifted up and released. This will prevent Send. any of the uh, neurovascular structures from being pulled down into the fracture site when we go to do the reduction maneuver in a minute here. So I'm going to follow median nerve. Okay, and that's all going to be Lacertus. Another send, please. Got that there. 
You guys see the nerve? So here we're just going back laterally and checking the Lacertus again to ensure that all of the Lacertus has been released. Because the Lacertus is in the zone of injury and is covered in fractured hematoma, it's really not that clear. It takes a combination of sharp and blunt dissection to ensure that all of the Lacertus fibrosis has been released and that there are no constricting points on the vascular bundle or the median okay, nerve. Good. So that stuff's liberated there. Okay. Army Navy. So sometimes what the most important thing to do is just make sure this stuff is out of your fracture site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold that there and hold the arm right about there. Do you have a cob, please? You have a two, three weedy? So we know we've got our goods there and there. Okay. So we're now starting to see down into the fracture site. So here we can see the uh, proximal spike. By using the cob we can scrape on the distal fragment, scrape away any periosteum or muscle that's still in repose. And once we can uh, flip that periosteum back and see some of the metaphyseal distal humerus, we know we've released enough. And so there you can see that's metaphyseal distal humerus there. So now we know everything has been taken out of the fracture site. So next we'll work medially to liberate that medial spike. So now here, working medially, we just need to release uh, everything that is preventing that medial spike from then retracting back posteriorly into the periosteal sleeve from which it came. So with the combination of the cob and the sucker tip, we're pushing the uh, fragment laterally uh, and retracting back and not allowing anything to drop down into the fracture site and pushing the proximal piece into the periosteal sleeve. So with the surgeon's thumb, it's then pushed down and into its sleeve. And with the other hand, the elbow is brought up flexed, just like we would doing a close reduction of a supracondylar humerus fracture. Before doing the final reduction maneuver, we're going to take one last check to make sure that the now liberated median nerve and brachial artery are up and out of the fracture site. We'll put the Army Navy under them, lift up so we can see all the way over the front of the humerus. The surgeon's finger again is put on that fragment, pushing it posteriorly, and the elbow is brought up into flexion for pinning in the usual manner. We can see now that in flexion, the fluoro demonstrates an acceptable reduction with the anterior humor line going through the capitellum. On the AP, uh, the columns are lined up and Bauman's angle is about 73 degrees. Here's our final construct with two laterally based pins. I like to use the 2.0 millimeter pins. Here's the final lateral. I think the key takeaways are number one, how badly injured the brachialis is. Uh -huh. Number two, you know, look how look how injured this is. Look at all that. It's all just gone. Yeah. Yeah, it's all just gone. You know, it's just there's just always this, this huge hole in it. Army Navy back. And I think the other thing too is you know knowing what that reduction actually looks like when you open it. Those keys are 
getting all of the injured brachialis and periosteum out of the fracture site, ensuring that your nerve and artery are extracted. Here's the look of your final fracture. That's joint capsule going all the way up to the level of the fracture site. Your medial column should be nice and well reduced here. You can see your pin coming from the other side. And then posteriorly, you can see the periosteal sleeve that's always stripped off the back of the humerus with this injury. We then deflate the tourniquet and close with absorbable sutures.